bow together in a word of prayer. Father, thank you for this wonderful day, Lord, that you've provided for us. Father, thank you for the freedom that we have, that we can come out and freely worship you today. And Lord, we're just grateful for that. Father, as we gather together today and Father, worship you. Father, may you be the center stage. And Father, may you uh, receive the glory and all the honor, Lord, that's due to you. Father, as we meet today, uh, Father, our hearts uh, may be heavy. Father, there may be burdens. Uh, there's many in our number who are sick and uh, those affected by other uh, situations. Father, there are some that are providentially hindered this morning. Father, there's others that, that can't meet with us that would love to be here. So, Father, we pray for those needs today. Father, we also want to remember those who are sick. Father, we think about Linda, our Faye Porter this morning as she's in the hospital. Father, we pray you would touch her in a special way, even this hour, Lord, and dealing with the situation that she has. Father, we think about Emma Lancaster, who's not able to be with us, her and her family. Father, we pray for that young child today. And then, Father, we, we pray for all the other needs, uh, the many names and many needs that uh, maybe even slip our minds, but, Father, you know all about them. Uh, so, Father, we pray that you would touch those needs today. And then, Father, we pray, pray diligently for our country today. Lord, with the conflicts that are happening in our world, uh, there in the Ukraine, uh, Father, we, we pray for our country. We pray for our soldiers uh, who may be in harm's way. Father, we pray for Christians in that country today, uh, Lord, who are, are seeking your face who are literally in a war zone. So, Father, we pray for their needs today. And all across this world, Father, we pray for individuals, uh, Lord, who are in harm's way. So, Father, we, we are, we're, again, we're just so thankful, Lord, that we have the freedoms uh, to meet here today. Father, I pray you'd bless our speaker today, my dear friend, Brother Bradley, as he brings a message here in just a few moments. I, Father, I pray that it would just touch our hearts today. And, Lord, just help us. Lord, we need you today. Lord, we need a help that only you can give us. The world will offer all these uh, sorts of uh, gimmicks and, and means, but, Father, the true word of God, Father, that's what we need today. So, Father, I pray you just help us. Lord, just give us a good time. Lord, if there's one that's gathered today that's lost, Father, we pray for the salvation of that soul today. Maybe even it's one that's tuned in by way of live stream. Father, we, we pray for that need as well. Lord, we pray that your name would be lifted high. Lord, we love you. And we thank you, Father, for first loving us. In Jesus' precious name, we do humbly pray. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Again, I'd like to welcome you to the Lord's house on a wonderful day that God has made for us. Some of us saw some sleep a little bit this morning. So praise the Lord for that. Well, I'd like to welcome our guests. There's many guests who are with us today, and we want to thank you for being here. Thank you for coming to worship with us. You're our guest, and, and we want to make you feel welcome. And we sure appreciate you for, for joining us today. It's good to see my dear friend, Brother Bradley, and his wife and his growing family. Praise the Lord for that. And uh, they, they keep going. They're going to need their own row here when they come. So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But it is good to see you, brother. We're excited to have you here today. Well, I'd like to offer some thank yous. Thank you to, to all those who helped clean this week. You did a great job here at the church. Looks great. And then I just want to thank you, church, on behalf of my family. Thank you so much for loving us and caring for us. The calls, the cards, the food, uh, you all have been just a blessing to us. And I think about the, the funeral there on Friday, folks pitching in, and it was just, uh, just a, a great time together as we reflected and remembered and celebrated my mother's life. And I, I'm just so thankful for my church family. Uh, just, what a, just what a rock and what an anchor you were and this stormy uh, section of life, and I just want to thank you for that this morning. Well, as far as announcements go this evening, uh, we'll have our prayer rooms at 5.30 uh, for the men and for the ladies, and then at 6 p.m. tonight, a little different uh, type service or uh, meeting. It will be our annual business meeting tonight at 6 p.m., so if you're a member and you'd like to attend that, we'll have that this evening at 6, and then Wednesday night, normal service time there at 7.30. Next Sunday, we're finally getting some normalcy back. Amen. So we'll have Sunday school next Sunday, Sunday morning service next Sunday, and Sunday evening service next Sunday. Looking forward to that. And then I have another announcement that I, maybe some of our choir members might start to get excited a little bit. 
Lord willing, here in this next month, we're going to try to work. I'll get with Brother Garrett. We're going to try to work and get our choir back. Wouldn't that be a blessing? Uh, so those who sing in our choir, it's time to get those vocals tuned up a little bit. So I'm sure that maybe even some of our men may want to join in this time. Wouldn't that be a blessing? They sing in the shower and things like that, sing around the house. Sing. Listen, I'm sure some of you sing mowing your grass, right? You sing in the choir. That'd be a blessing. But So just start thinking about that, praying about that, praying about the choir. We don't have a definitive date, but I just start thinking about that. In the coming days, the month of March, uh, Lord willing, I have some events planned for us, and we'll relay those next Sunday and kind of let us put them on the calendar. But just be praying about that. Lord has been so good to us. Uh, this is uh, this year started off so unique uh, again, uh, but it looks like we're going to get some normalcy. So I'm looking forward to the month of, month of March. As far as our reading this week, our scripture reading as we read through the Bible together will be in Numbers 15. Through Numbers 34, and we'll be in Mark chapter number 6 through Mark chapter number 9 this week. Well, we're about to sing another uh, congregational hymn together. Beautiful song we're going to sing. We're going to sing number 2, Glory to His Name. And what a blessing it is that we can gather together and give glory to His name. Listen, He's the one that's due all the glory. He's the one that's due all the praise. And the writer of this hymn was E.A. Hoffman. And E.A. Hoffman was a minister in his day. And listen, he had challenging times just like you and I go through. As a matter of fact, his first wife he lost after just a few years of marriage. She, she passed away. And he was left as a single father of three little boys. Can you imagine that? Back in the late 1800s, having three little boy rugrats running around. Well, the Lord blessed him. And he was able to remarry. And uh, he, all through his life, he found glory in his name. Praise the Lord. So he used Psalms, uh, uh, the 29th Psalm, verse 2, as his inspiration for writing this hymn we're about to sing. The Word of God says this, Given to the Lord the glory due to his name. Now we think about that. That's convicting when we ponder that thought. I know I'll fall short in giving God the glory that is due his name. And I think if we were all honest, we all fall short there because my, 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 it's inexhaustible. The glory that our God deserves. So this morning.
Brother Garrett, Sister Rebecca, for those wonderful songs this morning. You've done a great job. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm certainly glad for my Savior this morning. I hope you are as well. If you don't have a Savior, listen, would you trust Him today? Would you trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? The greatest decision you'll ever make. It's a decision that will carry weight for eternity. Amen. And what, a, what an absolute blessing it is to know Jesus Christ. Well, little ones, you can be dismissed at this time. Pray you have a wonderful time in Children's Church. And as they make their way out, I left out an announcement. We will not have a birthday supper tonight. We're going to make it up next month. And we're going to have a lot of birthdays next month. So looking forward to that. But my sweet wife sent me a reminder that I'd missed that. So I just wanted to share it with you. Amen. Well, it is just an honor uh, to have friends. Aren't you glad that you have friends in life that care for you? I'm glad we have a church family that cares for us. I'm certainly glad that I have a friend in, in Brother Bradley. And uh, through this uh, trying time in my life, in my family's life, listen, he's been right there. And uh, I, I'm glad for his friendship. I'm glad that college brought us together. Amen. And that, that is a blessing. Yeah. It brought us together. And boy, we tore me Pueblo up, didn't we, brother? Amen. I don't get to see him as often as we used to, but boy, it's glad to hear his voice on the phone. And it's wonderful to have folks like that in your life, isn't it? Well, Brother Bradley, he loves this church, and I think our church loves you, brother. And we're excited for what the Lord's laid on your heart to just be a help to us uh, during this time. So, brother, you come right on. Amen. I will have to echo that sentiment that uh, he just said. I believe this church loves me. Y'all made me feel like I was a celebrity the other day when I pulled up at the funeral. They said, everybody's coming up. I heard you preaching Sunday. I hear you preaching. And I said, well, yeah. I said, but it ain't no different than your pastor. I said, it's all the same. But y'all did. Y'all made me feel very welcome and loved. And I want to thank you for that. I thank you for being beside and behind your pastor. When I got the news, uh, I was devastated. I was rocked, just as some of you were. And... Uh, I called and called and called and called, and I didn't get no answer, which that's okay. I knew he was busy. I knew that he had things to take care of. But all I wanted to do was just hear his voice. That's all I wanted. I wanted to know he was okay. I wanted to know that, uh, that you know, I just wanted to hear his voice. And that's what I told him when I finally got to talk to him. I said, I just want to hear your voice. I couldn't imagine what you're going through. I couldn't imagine the situation. Um, and uh, so I just, I love him that much. I just want to hear his voice. I want to know he's going to be okay. And um, I love his family. I love his father. And uh, today, Grubbs family, this message is for you. Uh, church family, this is for you. Uh, as I seen on Friday, most of you was here. And uh, most of you was grieving just as long as uh, uh, with the family. Uh, but when Brother David asked me to come, I began to think, I, I don't know what to say. I can't help this church. I can't help this family. I can't do anything in and of myself. And so I began to pray and I began to uh, read and study. And the Lord sent me across a psalm. And it's not a, it's not a psalm that most everybody would know, but it's a psalm that rings out help. And in your prayer this morning, Brother David, the, the word you kept saying was help. We need help. We need help that only God can give. Well, this morning, that's what I would want to 
echo. That is what I want to give you. I, I want to give you what the Lord give me. And through this week and through some times in my life, I can say Psalms 121 will offer that help. Psalms 121 this morning, all eight verses we'll read together. This psalm, some say, is a soldier psalm. When we read this, you'll begin to see, you'll begin to hear some of the words that a soldier on the battlefield might cry. Or some say it is a traveler psalm. As you travel through life or as you travel these roads, uh, some say that a traveler would sing this song. I say this is a believer song. I say this is a believer song, and here's why. Because we all have to walk through valleys. We all have to walk through troubles. We all have to walk through trials. None of us are exempt. And when, you, when we read this psalm, you'll begin to see and, and understand why I say this is a believer psalm. Let's read uh, together this morning. Psalm 121 in verse 1. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. Verse number 2 says this, some of the best words in all of the Bible. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in. Listen at this. From this time forth and even forevermore. Let's pray this morning. Father, we love you. And Lord, we're thankful, God, for another opportunity to stand and preach your word. Father, I, I need your help this morning. Lord, I ask you to empty me of myself and fill me with your spirit. God, hide me behind the cross of Christ. That, God, these people may not see me and see my ins insufficiency, but God, they, they should see you and in your all-sufficiency. Father, I love you this morning, and I thank you for this church. I thank you for this place. Lord, it's always good to come to the hills. It's always good to be on top of the hill and, God, to look out over this beautiful view that this church has. Lord, I thank you for this church family today. Lord, I ask you to bless the Grubbs family and, I, and this church family here at Faith. And, Lord, we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And so when we look and as we walk through life, troubles come. Our life is turned upside down. Our life... Uh, our countenance, our eyes are affected. Our eyes go from uh, looking up, looking around, looking at everything. But when troubles come, your eyes become affected. I couldn't imagine uh, in Ukraine right now, their eyes have become affected. Their country was beautiful, it was peaceful. Uh, they always knew the threat of Russia just being across the border. But now you see as tanks roll through their city streets, as mothers hide their children in the subways, as, as, as they interviewed that one mom and she said, that, 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 that news anchor said, aren't you scared? She said, yes, I'm scared. But I can't show my babies that I'm scared. We've never, we've never faced that. We've never seen that. But there's people around that are going through those things in life. When I look at this, I see that our eyes become affected and then our countenance uh, falls. Our countenance, our, our, everything about us falls to the ground. But maybe that's what God wants for us. Because it's there when we're in the valley. It's there when we're in the valley. When we're, when we're in the hard times of life. When we're, when we're in the troubles. And it's there where He can speak to us. Because if any of you in here are like me, when it's in the good times, I may not listen as good. When everything's going good, my ears seem to tune off a little bit. Lord, it's okay. It's okay, everything's good right now. Sometimes we have to go through valleys to show us exactly who it is we need and, and what it is He has to offer us. 
when we, when, with God's help, I'd like to help you in the time of trouble and help you find help in the valley of your life. Sure, as this week has come, this is the valley that this church has to walk. This is the valley that this family has to walk. And I'd like to uh, help you and show you how to turn your eyes upon the only one who can help. The psalmist says in verse number 1, I will lift up. When you think of this psalm, and I think of the psalm writer here, the psalm writer is David. When you think of David, some of his greatest moments, uh, Brother David, are where? They're in the valley. You think about it. You think about as he was keeping his sheep when that lion came and took one of his sheep. That was a valley in his life. Man, that was his prized possession. Those sheep were his prized possession. That lion came and he said, oh, wait a minute. No, that's my baby. I've got to go get it. So he ran a lion. Then when the bear came and he said the same thing, that's another valley. He rent the bear. And then when, he, when you face Goliath, there's going to be Goliaths in your life, I want you to know. There's going to be giants in your life. But David went into the valley to face Goliath. And when he went in the valley, he always knew that he had help. He always knew that in the time in his life, that when he needed the Lord the most, the Lord would always be there. When you think of David and his son Absalom trying to kill him, he ran. That was another valley in his life. You think of the time when he was already anointed king and Saul was trying to kill him. That was another valley in his life. The psalmist said, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. You say, well, why are we looking unto the hills? Well, let me give you a little geogra uh, geographical setting of Psalms 121. Psalms 121 was written by David. And, and, and as Jewish people, they would have to return back to Jerusalem for Passover. Well, Jerusalem was built on top of a hill. There's hills around Jerusalem. Now, I, I, I just want to give you some background. The temple of God was in the hills of Jerusalem. The very mercy seat, the seraphims and cherubims, they was there. The very presence of God would only come down where that mercy seat was. So when the psalmist said, I will look unto the hills, you think about this. He said, I'm looking to the only place that I know the presence of God is. Because as Jewish uh, people in the, in the Old Testament, they didn't have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. They just couldn't look around every corner and say, okay, Lord, I, I pray right here and, and I get my help. No, they had to go to the temple. They had to go to the temple to see the presence of God. And so when this psalmist is saying, I lift up my eyes unto the hills, he only knew that the hills, that the presence of God was there. And so he's referring to the, the, the temple. He's referring to the temple. He's referring to the very presence of God. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord. I want to also say that the, uh, the, uh, the good uh, uh, missionary that went to Africa, David Livingston, before he left America, he prayed this psalm with his family. He prayed this psalm and then his mother-in-law wrote him a card one day. And it got to him some months later. And in that card she says, David, I want you to know that I pray this psalm every day for you. This is a psalm that offers a, a help that you can't get anywhere else. As I look today and I see in verse number 1, it says, uh, I will lift up mine eyes. We have to have proper placement. When you're in your valley, you have to have proper placement. I think of times in my life when I walk through hard times, when I walk through valleys, and when I walk through trials of life, my eyes are affected. The Bible says, My eye hath affected my heart in lamentations. Your eye is the gateway. Also in Luke 11, 34, it says, the, the light of the body is the eye. Everything that you see, everything that you, comes into your uh, body by way of your eye. And so when you go through trouble, it affects you. When you go through trials, it affects you. I want to say this, the proper placement of our eyes will, will render some help. 
We have to have proper placement. The, the song that I, that I re- brings to my mind here is turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His marvelous face. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Proper placement. The word I here is mentioned some 94 times in the Bible. It has a lot to do with how we feel, act, and live our lives. Our eyes have affected our heart. Our eyes uh, point us in the direction. When I look here at the psalmist, there's no, there's no telling where the psalmist is, but you know one thing, he's in a valley. He said, I will lift up. You have to see here that the psalmist is in a valley. His eyes have been down. His countenance has been down. But he said, I remember one thing. I remember that them hills, it holds the temple of God. And in them hills is the presence of God. I'm going to lift up my eyes to the only thing that I know that can help me. I'm going to lift up my eyes to the Lord. Because that's where my help comes from. Proper placement of your eyes will also render this. It will uh, render preeminent assistance. In verse number 2, it says in verse number 2, My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and the earth. Preeminent assistance. My help cometh from the Lord. The help word there means succor. That means to give assistance or aid. Hey, and then look at that word cometh. That ETH on the end, that's in the continual action. Guess what? Your help will always and only come from the Lord. No matter what you walk through, no matter what valley, no matter what bridge that you have to cross in life, the only thing that you need to know is your help cometh from the Lord. Your help cometh from the Lord. And then when I look at that word Lord, it's capital L, capital O, capital R, and capital D. That word, that name is only mentioned when it comes when it's talking about Jehovah God. It comes when we're talking about the existing one. I want to tell you church in here today, you exist because He exists. If He was to ever stop existing, you would stop existing. He's the all-powerful, all-supreme, all-wonderful God and Lord Jesus Christ. We're talking about Jehovah, the one that made the heavens and the earth. That word help means this. That word help is mentioned some 117 times in the Bible. The first mention of the the word help uh, was over there in Genesis chapter number 2. In verse 18. I want you to think about this. The first mention of the word help in the Bible was was a union between a man and a woman. God said that he was be her be his help meet. Psalm 124 and verse 8, our help is in the name of the Lord. And when I, when I think of that, our help is in the name of the Lord. Listen at this name, Lord, Jehovah, the existing one. Uh, Jehovah Rapha, the God the healer. Jehovah Nisi, my banner over me is love. He's been given a name which is above every name. And at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hebrews 4 and verse number 16, it says, Let us come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Sometimes when we walk through valleys and we walk through troubles in our life, our eyes just stay downward. Our countenance stays downward, but the psalm said, I will. He purposed in his heart that he will lift up his eyes. It's hard right now, and I know it. I've lost loved ones. I've lost church members. It's hard to lift up your eyes. You don't want to. You don't want to, but hey, your help cometh from above. Your help cometh from above. I'm glad we have the preeminent assistance and a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. We have been given the helper of all helpers. We've been given the preeminent assistance of Jesus Christ, and I'm so glad for it. And then not only does proper placement uh, render uh, preeminent assistance, 
But it also gives you this. It gives you a present assurance. It gives you a present assurance. Verse number 3 says this, He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. Hey, the first song that comes into my mind, I'm standing on the rock. I'm standing on the rock. My foot is on the rock and my mind's made up. I'm glad that Jesus Christ said upon this rock, and He wasn't talking to Peter, He was talking about Himself. Upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will, shall not prevail against it. I'm glad that the rock is Jesus Christ and I'm glad today that He will not suffer my foot to be moved. There is present assurance that if you look up to your, uh, lift up your eyes uh, that the Lord will help you. And He will give you that assurance. Psalm 46 and verse number 1 says this, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. I want to read today uh, Romans 8 and verse number 38. Romans 8 and verse number 38. Turn with me if you will there. Romans 8 and verse 38. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, not any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This morning I'd like to tell you that nothing nothing will ever separate you. When, you. when you put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, at that moment of salvation, guess what? There is present assurance that you're saved and you always will be. You always will be. When I got the, the text message to pray for the Grubbs family, the one thing that I knew was this, that Miss Denise had this assurance. Miss Denise had that uh, preeminent assistance in her life. She had this present assurance. And we know that she is in the arms of the Lord this morning. And I'm so thankful for that. Then when I see the proper placement gives you a preeminent assistance and then He gives you a, a present assurance, I also think of this. We have to have proper placement upon the proper person. The proper person, verse number 5, the Lord. It's real easy to get caught up in your Bible reading and you just read past a lot of things. It's real easy just to read over the Lord. Don't ever just skip over the Lord. It's, he is the proper person. Verse number 5, the Lord. The only refers to the one true God. This word Lord only refers to Him. Lord, He is the shade. He is the shade. I want you to think of this. What is shade? We, we, go, we go out to the park. We sit under a shade tree, right? That tree stands between you and the elements, correct? I want you to think of this. As we walk through life, the Lord shades us from the elements. Psalm 121 proves that to us. He walks alongside of us and He shades us from the sun. It says, It shall not smite you by day or the moon by night. I want you to know that nothing in the day will ever take God by surprise. Nothing in the night that cometh your way will ever take God by surprise. You will have the proper person when you need Him. In your time of trouble, you will have the promise that the help cometh from the Lord. And then when it talks about upon thy right hand, look at, look at verse number uh, uh, 6 with me. No, 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 verse number 5. The Lord is thy shade upon the right hand. That is meaning there, uh, it is speaking of Him in the old time, your protector would come on your right hand. He would walk beside of your right hand. Hey, I w I'm glad to know this morning, I'm glad to know any day that I live that the Lord is upon my right hand. He is my protector. He is my provider. He is my provision. He is my makeup. He is everything to me that I need. The Lord is my help. The psalmist uses in verse 6 the sun and the moon. Think of this it is the two most powerful forces that God created. The sun to rule the day, the moon to rule the night. 
the psalmist says, even the most powerful thing that God created cannot harm you. Cannot touch you. It can't get to you because the Lord is thy shade. The Lord is thy shade. And I want to tell you this, no matter what comes in your life, no matter what comes your way, no matter what Satan throws at you, the Lord is your shade. The Lord is your help. Lift up your eyes this morning. Lift up your eyes for your help cometh from the Lord. I also think of this. I think of a, a, a song Peg McCamey sings under his feet. No matter how big the waves are, when Peter was sinking there in the waters, he got his eyes, the proper placement. He, got his, he, got, he, he had his proper placement wrong. He got his eyes on the things around him. He began to sink. He said, Lord, save me. Where was the Lord? He was standing on the water. No matter how big the waves of life get, no matter how big the, 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 the troubles and trials get, I want you to remember one thing, and Miss Peg sings it, sings it. They're under his feet. He's in control. He will be your help if you have the proper placement upon the proper person. I want to see that we have a, a promised preservation in verse number 5. That, that's that's uh, the, the, the promise there. We have a, pro, a promised preservation. The Lord is going to be with you. And the Lord is going to uh, take care of, uh, of all of our troubles. And then also with the proper person, we don't only have a promised preservation, but we have a perpetual position. Hallelujah this morning. I'm glad I have a forever settled place in heaven. The Lord said, if you believe upon me in my name, thou shalt be saved. I'm glad when I've done that, my position is forever. There's nothing that can come and separate you from the love of God. We just read it in Romans. Nor height, nor depth, nor principality, nor power. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. We have a perpetual position. It's forevermore. Verse number 7, The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. When the, when the Bible talks about from all evil, it didn't say that you wouldn't face evil, but He said He would preserve you from it. I think about this word, this book right here. This book faced a lot of evil. Nobody wanted this book to reach you in the English language. But God in His sovereignty, God in His power preserved this Scripture for you so that you would have a canonical book that, that would come to you and you would have the answers to all life's problems and questions. He preserved His Word. He will preserve you from all evil and then He will preserve your soul. The soul speaking of our everlasting part. I am glad that because He exists, I can exist. I'm glad that because He is perpetual, I become perpetual when I place my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. As I've said earlier, you think of David and, and, and the times that he walked through valleys. The psalmist said in Psalm 23, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. We walk through valleys in life and sometimes they're very hard to take. Separation is hard. We, we walk through times in our life where uh, we've just been beat down by the world. Our eyes have been affected. Our eye placement is now upon the ground and we're thinking to ourselves, we, we don't have it in us to look. But the psalmist encouraged you this morning. He said, I will look up. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hill. And I'm thankful for this. When I look back at verse number 1, the psalmist said, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. And the psalmist here, as I told you earlier, was talking about the place of the temple. But David, I'm reminded, Brother David, I'm reminded of another hill. I'm reminded of the hill called Golgotha. I'm reminded of Calvary. I'm reminded of the hill that gives us the help that we need. Hey, there's no help for any of us today unless we come by the way of Calvary. 
We don't get any help unless we come by Calvary. And when I talk about Calvary, that's, that's the place where they put Jesus upon the cross. He had to walk up that hillside for you and for me. I'm thankful today that when I'm down and when I'm on the, when I'm on the ground, when life has beat me down, when troubles come, when trials come, I can have this confidence that I say, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. What hill? The hill called Calvary. It's because His suffering that I can even lift up my eyes. It's because of His existence that I can lift up my eyes. It's because of the stripes that He bore upon His back that was meant for my back that I can lift up my eyes. We've been offered help. But we have to get out of the way to receive it. Sometimes our, our minds and sometimes our, our, our thoughts are not where they need to be. But this morning I'd like to remind you that proper placement of your eye upon the proper person will give you the help that you would want. The help this morning... That, that, that comes from the Lord is a perpetual help. Look at verse number 8. The Lord shall preserve thy going out. He's saying this. He's saying it don't matter where you go. It don't matter what you walk through, family. It don't matter how dark the days are. Thy going out and thy coming in. From this time forth, that means in the present time. And then it says this, and even forevermore. I'm thankful again for the hill called Calvary because it's because of what happened upon Calvary and it's upon what happened uh, three days later. Uh, up from the grave He arose, a mighty triumph o'er His foes that He sealed my position in eternity the perpetuality of, of the work of Calvary. I'm thankful for the heel. And when, when you ever are in a time of trouble or trial, uh, I, would, I, would, I would encourage you to do this. To read Psalm 121. To read Psalm 121. And remember, it's, it's your responsibility to lift up your eyes. It's your responsibility Hey, we all need help. I'm not above asking for it. I need help in day-to-day -day life. Anybody that's got a good back, I'm moving. You, you meet me over here in Tobaccoville later. But, no, I need help. But I need spiritual help. I need physical help. I need mental help. I, David, uh, Brother David knows I'm crazy, but I need mental help. But we all need help. It don't matter what road you walk in life. It don't matter uh, what, what avenue you, you walk down. It don't matter what comes, we all need help. And this morning, I hope that I've pointed you to the one that can help you. I can't help you. Your pastor can't help you. His family can't help you. The church can't help you. Hey, but there is one person that can help you. His name is Jesus. His name is Lord. He is, Lord of, he is King of King and Lord of Lords. This morning I would ask the question. Here's the question in closing. Where's your eyes placed? Where are your eyes placed? In times of trouble, in times of trials. Look, this world, don't look at the world for nothing. Okay? I'm definitely not getting on politics, but... This world's going down. We've got people invading other countries. You've got COVID still running rampant. It's nothing but a fear. It's nothing but a fear tactic. But the psalmist said, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hill. From whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. I want you to know, church, today that the, your help won't come from the world. Your help won't come from your family. Your help won't come from your friends. Your help only cometh from the Lord, the existing one. And I want to ask you to again today, as, as I turn the service back over to Brother David, I'd ask you this one more time. Where are your eyes this morning? 
hey, I have, I've messed up and I have, I have put my eyes and I've placed my eyes upon people and upon things and I've been let down every time. But there's never a time that He's not been faithful. There's never a time that He's ever let us down. So why don't you lift up your eyes this morning unto the hill. What hill? Calvary's hill. The one that held Jesus. Look to Jesus, for He is the author and finisher of our faith. He made the way for help for you. Now you just have to look. You just have to look. Brother David. Brother Bradley, thank you for that message this morning. We just what, what, a help, uh, what a help it is uh, to see from the Word of God where our help comes from. This morning, I'd ask Sister Rebecca if you would come and uh, we'll just uh, play an invitation uh, moment, just for a moment on the piano this morning. But as we ponder that thought, uh, the question Brother Bradley posed to us from the Word of God, listen, it, it's not just about the family uh, that's gone through the loss. Listen, every person has burdens in their life. Every person has needs. Brother Bradley put it beautifully. All of us need help. Maybe this morning you need help. Uh, maybe you need to turn to the Lord. Lift your eyes upon Calvary this morning. Look to Him for help today. I'll ask you to stand for just a moment. And you can just bow your heads right where you're at. Sister Rebecca's going to play this morning. Yes, ma'am. We'd like to thank you for joining us today on our live stream service. We pray that you are encouraged, that you are blessed, and that you are challenged by God's Word. If we can be of any assistance to you, please feel free to reach us at our email below. We pray that you have a wonderful day, and God bless.